Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. In today's episode we are back with more news and got quite a few aircraft updates coming for this week so stay tuned. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. First up on, a, on our list here is Fly-By-Wire has some new updates on the uh, run-up for the A32 and next. We got new font coming for many of the uh, aircraft features of the EIS, the ISS, DCDU, and then the A380 RMP, so the radio stack. Uh, that's going to be uh, really, really nice to see uh, come down the line. I am so excited for the A380. We also have some new changes up for the MCDU and its functionality coupled with the Hoppy system. Now, I haven't had a chance to dive into this yet, but uh, this is going to be pretty interesting. Controller pilot data link communication. So my understanding is it allows you to get uh, certain information, ATC clearances and things like that directly from the MCDU without having to worry about an air traffic control interface. So that should be pretty awesome. Obviously, the MCDU web interface that was released earlier in this year has been a big hit. Being able to control the MCDU from any kind of uh, touchscreen, tablet, or even your cell phone, as I have personally tested, makes the uh, uh, program of the MCDU seem almost seamless and as if you are really in the cockpit. The response time from entry from your portable device into the A320 is almost instant. Like You really can't see any uh, lag or delay at all. They've really done a fantastic job. Uh, for those of you who may not be aware, in the fly pad settings, you can actually now set a nose wheel tiller axis if you want to use a completely separate axis for your uh, nose wheel steering wheel down on the ground. Something that we're going to be talking about soon on the channel is stored waypoints. You can now create your own waypoints um, and store them into the uh, MCDU and then pull them up for later use. This could be really handy, for example, if you have a specific approach fix that you want to try or if there's a specific designated uh, spot in the sky that you wish to store for a later heading or use or maybe a holding pattern of some sort. There's a lot of implementation uh, reasons for having stored heading, and I think it's really fantastic they finally added this in. Uh, this has been something that has been much desired across the platform ever since the launch of the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Finally, Flypad OS 3 is on its way down the line. Hasn't been released yet, but of course, since I just updated the tutorial PDF guide with the current Flypad, naturally there'd be a completely uh, uh, new OS ready for it, which is a complete overhaul of everything that I just did. Thank you, Flybywire. Just kidding. So, as you guys can see, they have completely remodeled it and redesigned it. It looks very, very slick. You have a ton of different options, everything from pinned charts. Now, from uh, reading the description here, this is going to be really awesome. You can actually have charts or PDF documents locally on your uh, system that can be then pinned to the fly pad and pulled up for uh, rapid use and access later on. Uh, the dashboard and progress of the flight has completely been redone with the meet our information and route uh, at the ready and available. Um, <laughs> this is really, really awesome. I'm really enjoying the color scheme that they've done with it too. I think it's going to be much, much easier on the eyes. I am always one for dark mode, so uh, the new color scheme is something that I'm super, super excited about. Um, notice right here in the bottom that I'm pretty interested in is the maintenance. We have active failures for captain's PFD display, active failures, uh, first office PFD display, and obviously we can go to the page and I'm willing to bet add some more. Um, and then the import sim brief data that has also been adjusted. And I like that verbiage significantly better because right now it says from sim brief. So unless you're, you know, really know what you're doing there i can see where that could be a little bit misleading so it's kind of nice to see that the performance calculators have completely been overhauled um, much of the layout is the same but now you can shift the units of measurement to better suit what your area is again um, i actually just recently did a video on the landing calculator and uh, you had to convert things from meters to feet and things like that even though the meters measurement was right in front of my face in that video so we won't talk about that um, we don't bring up the old stuff here, um, but it is nice to be able to have that ability to change the units of measurement, everything from temperature to inches to our uh, length and weight. Um, so well done. Once again, fly by wire. They just keep stepping the game up over and over and over again. 
Um, air traffic control settings, you guys can see that they've done something completely different. I'm gonna have to dive into this as I have yet to actually get onto VATSIM, but this is a completely different layout than anything that I've seen yet. You obviously have your set and uh, active and standby channels with the frequencies listed right there on the fly pad. Now, I don't know if that's how it currently operates, again, as I have yet to use VATSIM, but I really like the layout here. You have your um, frequencies as well as their designations and, um, or excuse me, department associations and then having the radio stack imagery down there on the bottom is really really nice I think it's they've done a great job with that this is one of the ones that really caught my attention is the charts um, now the charts are already there but again being able to have this nice clean layout and then be able to pin them for later access and as you can see here this is what I was talking about earlier about the PDF availability so you can have these PDF images directly on your computer and then pull them up from the fly pad um, at your request so this is really really big implementation I think the more that you guys use it the more you're gonna see the value in it especially for those who may not like to have a Navigraph subscription um, all of these Jepson charts are available online for free the thing about Navigraph is it combines everything into one nice application but if you're someone who's willing to go out there and pull the legwork and grab your charts you can grab any of these charts anything it's all publicly available and free create your own database if you will in uh, on a C drive or you know one of your storage drives and be able to pull them up fairly rapidly right here from the fly pad so they've really done a big number with expanding the options and availability to their customer base um, by um, by doing this so once again flyby wire is really really stepping up their game we can see the new checklist layout and uh, all the other formatting that has been changed in the fly pad as well I am really really excited to see this version come down the line I ch as soon as I saw this I immediately jumped into the uh, installer and updated the development development version and unfortunately was uh, broken-hearted that this these are not yet implemented but Obviously, we have a lot of very exciting things from Fly-By-Wire coming down the line. So stay tuned as I will definitely keep you posted as these changes come to life. Next on our list, according to FS Elite, Just Flight previews the BAE 146-100 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I had never even heard of this freaking airplane. Um, now, well, I guess that's not completely true. I have seen one before, but never knew what it was called or its designation. This is a goofy looking plane. Um, it is considered a jumbo liner. Um, which really caught me off guard because when you look at it, it's actually a very squatty little aircraft, but very, very wide. Um, I love the four engines on it. it, it it's sort of like, it, I feel like they took a big giant cargo plane and just squished the crap out of it. Um, but at the same token, I am super excited. These texturing looks wonderful. Very, very well done. I love the power cart. I love all the detail that's been put into it just seems like every little inch of this aircraft. Um, many of the features that have been announced already, again, a very detailed fly pad, much like what we see in the A32NX, where everything from weights and cargo and checklists, uh, doors and ground service are going to be accessible directly from this. Um, but uh, if you look at the interior textures, you have that age look it's clearly not a newer quote-unquote aircraft so it's got that age look while maintaining the uh, high level of detail that we would expect for microsoft flight simulator and really any simulation i mean obviously we all are looking for that anytime that we're flying or uh using any kind of simulator whatsoever really but judging by the uh screenshots that we have here you take a look at the depth of the panels and the details been put into the gauges how clear you can read them even from these screenshots even back over here in these images here um I can read every single number. I can see we see every needle and every digit, and so that's a really good sign and uh, speaks very highly to the resolution that these images are created at, and that's going to go a very long way for us, especially when it comes to UVR pilots. Uh, the BA-46, we do not have an announcement day yet. However, much of the major systems have been completed is what we do know. Um, and uh, in the blog that is listed here on the FS Elite site, they do discuss a full flight that has been taking place while talking about, while going through their uh, their post here. Now, the one that caught me way off guard, I was not expecting this. It has speed brakes or yeah, you'd have to call those speed brakes. You can't call those spoilers. Those are definitely speed brakes, and they're the size of an aircraft carrier. Um, but uh, I never... I, I have never known that any kind of airliner or cargo service like this 
had speed brakes on them um, and those things are massive gosh those are huge at the same token I'm very 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 intrigued I want to know what that does to the flight characteristics uh, changing the uh, the airframe down the fuselage so dramatically I mean you're taking that streamlined fuselage and turning it into a brick wall so I'm willing to bet those things just slow this thing down like a like uh, like you're hitting a wall but I guess we'll find out once we actually get access to the aircraft itself so super super excited excited about this one um, very unique something different you know of course I'm excited for the 737 I'm excited for the Phoenix a320 I'm excited for many of the other aircraft that come out but I do get even more so excited when I see these aircraft that I never even thought of you know I mean I, I was honestly I was really pumped for the MD80 and still am make no mistake about that but when I saw this one it was like wow like I said this is something completely different it's going to be unique to fly in the sky not something you see uh, uh, around in content creators much so obviously that's a vantage point for me so super super excited let me know what you guys think in the comments about this aircraft it's definitely uh, very very interesting BAE 146 never uh, <laughs> never even knew about the aircraft so stay tuned as always guys because I'll be following this one as well Okay, next we have the DC Design Showcase Concord development for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Once again, we still, as of this moment, do not have any release date yet, um, but uh, in the latest development... Um, it does state that the pilots will have to manually control weights, loads, and fuel levels for their flight. So again, you have some uh, detailed flight work to do while in the cockpit. Now, I know that there's a lot of opinions when it comes to uh, DC Designs and some of the other aircraft, but uh, the Concorde is shaping up to look actually rather nice. Um, I'm hoping that the textures meet up to what the expectations are for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Some of these screenshots do look rather nice. Um, it's nice to see some PBR effect up here in the in the fuselage, uh, getting some reflections. The afterburners don't look half bad at all, and I know afterburners in general, I'm going to be completely fair here, they're tough in Microsoft Flight Simulator because I don't think Microsoft Flight Simulator really has an SDK that supports them. Um, I think every single uh, aircraft that we have, the F-16, F-18, uh, F-14, 15, uh, F-22, I know, uh, F-35, right? All of our jet engine aircraft and now soon to be the Concorde, um, I think they're having to come up with their own mechanism or, or so to speak, or code or, or customization, if you will, custom input to create the afterburner effect. Um, now, I know with the F-18, obviously, this, that's a Sobos aircraft, so maybe that that has changed. Maybe we'll see some better afterburner effects. So when it comes to afterburner effects, I'm not too judgy because I, it's just obvious from the different development standpoints with a different aircraft and when you see the massive differences between the afterburners that there was a lot of customization work having to be done to create that effect so i'm keeping that in mind here um now um i have previous experience with the dc designs aircraft you guys are welcome to check out the channel for my reviews of said aircraft um, i'm really hoping this one meets the bar the concord i think you know is a very historical aircraft it's a very unique aircraft um very very expensive to fly um, and I'm really hoping that this meets the expectations of the Microsoft Flight Simulator community as there are um, a lot of, it, there would be a lot of really neat aspects to use the Concorde in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Again, that ability to fly anywhere in the world and then match the speeds that the Concorde has could make some of those really long distance flight a heck of a lot more enjoyable. And again, you get that uniqueness of that, you know, <laughs> I doubt anyone from my generation has ever been in a Concorde, and we'll be lucky if we ever see one fly again. So to be able to have this historical uh, aircraft in our simulations and be able to use it for our own content, I think could be a ton of fun. So with that being said, guys, keep an eye on the channel. Keep an eye on FS Elite, and uh, hopefully we'll have some news uh, about the further development of the DC Designs Concorde very soon. Last on our list is we have two different things here, all going for the same page. Got Friends Redefining a Remaster. Let's talk about this article for a second. I'm just going to hit some highlighted points here. Uh, again, a link to all of these will be down in the description below, so make sure you guys check them out if you want further detail. Um, and we have here first meeting the Got Friends development team. We have Got Gravel, as you guys all know from the Vertigo. Um, and then we have the, uh, the uh, Junks. 
270 Incorporated and Microde, um, who make up the Got Friends team. First off, what are they doing? Or first, a special thank you to the community. I do want to make sure to uh, say thank you on their behalf as they made it a point to put this in. I love seeing the thank yous. I think it's important to pass those along. Uh, they are getting ready to develop into a full-time payware ready or payware supported group. Um, and their content thus far absolutely meets payware requirements. If you go even from the Vertigo to the GBR3 uh, to any of these other aircraft that we're going to be talking about here shortly, their quality absolutely meets it. So this is one of those developers that I have absolutely no problem hearing that they're going payware and I would definitely jump on any of their payware product. However, they wanted to make sure to give a big thank you to all the supporters who have made this possible for them. And so uh, I wanted to make sure to pass that information along on behalf of them because that's a really awesome and beautiful way to start out an article like this. Uh, I think it's really important to remember where you came from and how you got there i certainly do that's why i'm constantly thanking my youtube subscribers and patreon etc so big job um an era of remasters so real quick i'm just going to sort of shoot over them they are taking a bunch of their previously developed aircraft and remastering them we have an example right here with the discus 2c um and this is a glider aircraft and feel free to uh, check out this website and check out the different images here you can see that as they remaster everything we have texture changes cockpit canopy changes the details down in the cockpit below you can absolutely see a, a major difference in their work here and i'm sure you know knowing the team and the quality of the work they've put out already i'm sure if there's any flight model adjustments necessary, I guarantee those are being done as well. Many of these aircraft are being built from the ground up, so keep that in mind as we go through this. Xbox releases incoming. I know that's a big a hitter for a lot of Xbox players. You guys get really bummed out, and I can completely understand when certain mods, add-ons, etc., aren't available for the Xbox and are dedicated to PC. And I'm sure, being completely fair, that has to do that. There's a I, I, I'm positive there's a major difference in the way that Xbox handles the ads or um, add-ons and mods versus the way PC does. I imagine that there's a completely different process involved in making these compatible for Xbox, but that's just my speculation. That is not concrete information okay um anyway so but a good news for xboxes is starting with the gbr3 special for those of you who don't know the gbr3 is i believe a payware aircraft memory serves i do own it i just can't remember if i paid for it or not <laughs> meaning if it was freeware or payware i know the vertigo is freeware but the gbr3 actually i'm positive is a payware aircraft and it is awesome this is a fun fun aircraft i use it on an air race track all the time when i'm just messing around uh we actually did a live stream with it and it grips and rips that is a fun fun aircraft especially if you have the ability to rock and roll in virtual reality but uh i could also see you guys on your xbox systems with a big screen tv rock out that gbr3 man hit some uh, low terrain rip through some trees and buildings and trust me you'll absolutely enjoy that so you guys should be very very excited to have the gbr3 coming your way that's fantastic for you guys new aircraft announcement um actually real quick to touch on this just keep in mind that all the aircraft they have touched thus far are they are going to be working on remastering and redeveloping so it's not just the discuss too i don't know if i was clear on that so i wanted to jump back up real quick but new aircraft announcement is the ea7 egley Opt optica this is a very interesting aircraft let me back up a little bit so you guys can see this here uh, i was looking at this earlier you know what we can actually probably just do that there we go and uh, let's kick it back to there. There we go. So this is the Egley Optica. I have never even heard of this plane, nor did I think it was real. Um, but apparently it is. I mean, look at that big turbine engine in the back, that big, huge bubble canopy. This looks like something out of like the, that space movie, 2010. Um, whoa, what was that? That wasn't good. Interesting. Okay, there we go. We're, we're back. But uh, <laughs> I got to be honest, uh, when it comes to unique aircraft like this, I'm always on the fence, back and forth, back and forth. Um, it was sort of like that uh, Learjet aircraft that's on its way out as well. Um, but this one I'm going to be trying out. And again, it has to do with the developer and who they are and what they stand for and the quality of the work they put out. Um, if it meets any of their other aircraft, it's going to be a fun aircraft to fly. Um, I really do like the more, um, what would you call this, modern design? I don't know if you'd call that a modern design or not. If memory serves, it's actually an older aircraft. Let's go back and uh, check down the documentation here. Uh, I believe they do mention when this began. So upon release date, the Edgley Optica will be launching at $20. Um, and uh, we should be seeing this within the week. 
Um, let's see here. Da, 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 da. As of a major appreciation for your amazing support over the last year, the Egli Optica will be released for 50% off during the first week. That is pretty awesome. Any support of the original product who donated uh, any amount up until the release will also receive the Payware Project gifted in full. That's another beautiful statement. So if you have already supported this project, if you donated to these guys um, in regards to this project, you'll be receiving, receiving the aircraft for free. Uh, considering the closing, uh, the closed beta is testing running smoothly. You can look forward to the release within the next week on Flight Sim Two, closely followed by an in-game marketplace release on PC and Xbox. So let's see here. There we go. Let's talk the Optica, uh, 1974. I knew I read that somewhere that it was uh, an actually an older aircraft. I guess that shouldn't be surprised coming from the 70s. Kidding. Um, but uh, this aircraft uh, is definitely very, very unique. I'm going to leave, uh, again, a link to this down in the description below, guys. So make sure you check this one out because uh, I'm not going to go through the whole article. But I do want to check out these screenshots with you guys. Uh, look at the beauty that they've done here. Um, I'm really digging some of the scenery and it's just at the, or the scenery behind the aircraft and the way they've created these presentations. At the same token, it almost reminds me like a grasshopper. Um, it's got a very, very odd shape. This is a very, very interesting aircraft. Um, however, looking at things from the cockpit, the radio stack and or instrument st stack, I should say, it looks very, very nicely done. I really like the layout. It almost has that helicopter feel to it. Um, very similar to like a R44 or something like that. You know, very similar uh, in, in regard to the where the, the, the stack is versus the, the canopy. I mean, that bubble canopy is huge. So I'm really excited to see what the field of view is going to be really like. And I like that you can take whiskers along with you there in the flight as well. That's always going to be nice to have a little companion with you. So once again, guys, uh, be sure to check this article out and read it for yourself. I promise that you'll enjoy the read. It was a very well-written article and a very nice read. Uh, got friends, you guys are a fantastic group. I love the work that you put out, and I was very, very happy to see this and uh, read through it, and which is why I was also am, am, I should say, very, very happy to share this on my channel. Keep up your fantastic work. Stay together, got friends. I can't wait to see what you guys have coming down the pipeline. As always, guys, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and leave your comments down below and on your feelings about today's video and uh, what aircraft you may be excited for. What was your favorite feature today? And uh, I'll be sure to touch on those more in the future to make sure that uh, you guys enjoy the content. As always, stay safe and healthy. I'll see you in the next one.